Hello, Christy here with Little Roots Ranch, and today we're going to making one of my favorites, which is plum jam. So I make plum jam every day. I cut up like, I don't know, like 20, 30 cups of uh, plums and make them. And so I wanted to share that process with you today. Um, one, you can purchase plums if you don't have the ability to source them here in the Pacific Northwest. We're so lucky that we have the access to so many different types of fruits. We struggle to grow peaches, but everything else we're really good at, especially like berries and stuff. So anyways, I've already harvested, I don't know if you can, this big bag. Oh yeah, I've got like four of them like it. I don't know if you can see the plums, kinda. Um, without me dumping them all over. And today I'm gonna make jam. Um, as you can see, I'm set up outside and that's because this year I'm smart. Last year, or actually all the years in the past, I've always done it with an assembly line of children and it's terrible because if you've ever bitten into a plum, you know that the sauce runs down your face and your shirt and like everything in the world and that's just one plum. Imagine cutting up like 40 cups of plums. And so it's always been a disaster. And for some reason, I finally had the bright idea of setting up my station outside and so I can just hose it. And that's fantastic because plums are sticky. So the inspiration for my recipe, oops, as I drop everything, is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. And so on page 22 and 23 are there um, no pectin added uh, besides the natural, of course, in the fruit recipes. And so that's the one that I follow. I personally don't add any artificial pectin. I use the fruit's natural pectin. The more firm a fruit is, like just before it's ripe, then the more pectin naturally occurring that it will have. And you can, like I use a mixture of, I don't know how to explain, but I kind of just know like as I'm going. And if for some reason I only have exceptionally ripe fruit, which has a lower pectin count, what I'll do is we have an apple, well, several apple trees, but we have an apple tree and they've got teeny little apples like that big right now. And so I'll just go get a couple of those and they're ripe with, um, with pectin and so that will add natural but these ones are pretty firm some of them some of them are softer uh kind of picked a variety so that way i can have my perfect jam <coughs> excuse me another thing to note is that i um modified the recipe a little bit i'm not a monster sugar eater and i don't like things that are really 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 sweet and i surely don't want my kids eating that i remember the first time i went to make jam and i looked at the recipe and it was like 10 billion cups of sugar and I was like oh my kids are never eating jam for as long as they live um, but what I found out is that I can make my own and I can change that not only that I'm not that I'm not a fan of sweet I actually like it when it's just a tad bit sour not like where you're like whoo but just a drop so the way I'll put the recipe below but I modified it um, in that I use like 70% of the sugar and but i also add um per batch three tablespoons is it table or tea tablespoons of uh lemon juice and so i really like that because it gives just a little bit it like rounds out the sweetness and it's a lot less sugar and it's amazing and i love it so with that said i'm going to stop throwing this around and start throwing these around well, at least cutting them and prepping them and stuff. Basically, so the recipe at its very core is, are plums, sugar, water, lemon juice. And so the first step is taking all of these. Each batch will require, what is it, 10, uh, 10 well, the original batch. I like quadruple or sextuple or what, sextuple. I don't, I don't know how it works, but um, I just increased the batch, but each, Res batch at its at its core is five cups of plums. Like I said, I'll be cutting, I don't know how many. Well, ju I just go and then I find out how many we have. Um, but so basically, 
I just want to remove the the little pit in the middle because obviously those don't belong in jam. I don't think you can see my workstation, so I will be right back with a better view of what I'm working on. All done? Okay, perfect. There you are. So I, what I have set up in my outdoor table, which I think you can kind of see my head, whatever, it's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. What, yeah, I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize in advance. But I'm outside, which is great, because then when I'm done with everything, I can just hose it off. And I'm so excited and embarrassed that I didn't think about that before. I've got, <coughs> I don't know, like 40 pounds of plums down here next to me including some random ones I just picked up. These are the pits. I, um, those usually go in a bucket. I just hadn't grabbed one yet and I've made so many trips in and out and I was like, I can't go in for another thing. My hands are usually sticky. But of course then it dawned on me, I was like, oh, I should make a YouTube video. And so that's what I'm doing. So I already started. So that's why I'm like picking up. And then over here, just out of view is my measuring cup. This is a four cup measurer. I wish I had like a 20 cup because then it just makes it a lot easier I have, or easier, I should say. Um, I have to remember how many times I've dumped it in and then I've got a bowl here that collects all of the uh, stuff. And so for right now, we will get to the slicing. Um, so take your plum and these are the uh, golden ones, but you know, any of them will do. And I kind of just cut it. It really doesn't matter on this stage. Like, however, probably people have better options than me. If you do, please let me know down below. Um, but I kind of just, I think I mix it up because I cut so many plums and I'm like, oh, I'll cut it this way and then I'll cut it that way. But I usually always just cut it in half and then the one half just gets tossed in there. And then of course there's the pit here. I don't know if you can see it. And so a few things, sometimes I'll cut around it but usually I just cut it in half again and I kind of keep doing that. See all the juice? They're very juicy. And these are more of like less ripe ones or whatever, but they're so yummy. And so I try and pull off. There's still some left around the pit. Um, I used to mess with that, but now I make so many that I don't. Um, I just throw it away or not throw it away. Sorry, nothing's ever thrown away. It's either makes of the compost, the animals is reused. In this case, it'll be pressed for juice. And then I cast aside my plum stuff. And so basically, I'm just gonna do that with 40 million plums. And I will show you a quick, blah. I will show you a quick, quick glimpse of that. Apparently, I also need to learn how to talk. So hold on just a moment. Next, all of the ingredients, which are the plums, of course, the water, the sugar, and the lemon juice, all go into a massive pot um, where they will get boiled to reduce. As I'm boiling, there will be like a foam that develops on the top, and then I will spend my time basically scooping that out um, until there's none left, and then uh, wait for it to get to the desired consistency, which is really thick. Well, not really thick, but just not, you know how it is right now. It's liquid. Um, you want to do the test to make sure that it is firm enough, which is if it piles, on, sorry, had an itch on my elbow. If it piles up on the, um, it's like a frozen spoon and you put a drop and see if it holds its shape or whatever, because obviously anything that's warm is going to uh, be more like liquidy or whatever than it's like room temperature, which is why you put the spoon in the freezer. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and keep stirring this, get it to boil and reduce. And then the next time I see you, I will be putting the jars in, or sorry, filling the jars with the jelly or jam, I guess, technically. Okay. And so here you can see kind of the foam that starts to appear. Um, and basically I'll let it get oops, steaming up my thing but basically you just kind of there you go like just dip the 
ladle in there and then discard it. Obviously, you don't want to get the juice with it. I usually wait till it gets a little higher, but I just want to show you the foam. All right, and so here you can see that the chunks, oops, I guess it's gonna steam up the camera. Sorry about that. But you can see that the chunks have disappeared for the most part. There's still a little foam. I've been working on getting that. You see the color's gotten darker and also it's reduced. And so now is where constantly stirring and pretty soon I will be doing the plate test um, or the frozen spoon test or both. I generally like to do both because I always worry about it not being firm enough and then once it's done, it's done. Um, and so, but yeah, that's where you put it, either the spoon or the plate in the freezer. And then if it's the spoon, you put a little bit on it and see kind of how it slicks off of the spoon. Or my favorite is on the plate where you put it on like just a little bit and then kind of let it where it mimics room temperature and you can kind of see how thick it is. So that's my favorite way. But regardless, we're getting close and that's always exciting because I'm ready to be done. <laughs> okay, so now that the jam is ready to go and I'm gonna put it into my jars with a quarter inch of headspace and then process for 10 minutes and then rest for five and then pull them out and let them sit overnight. So I've got my jar, my little uh, funnel thingy. Lovely jam. For these I'm using the pints, but I usually take some and do like the half pints so that it's, I can give as gifts or to friends, family, whatever. Then I'll be looking for that middle line, which is the half inch mark. And by half, I mean quarter. Let's see, all right, put that there. And I always use a little chopstick thing just to make sure, even though it's usually for denser items, but that's okay. And then paper towel. A little bit of water. Wipe the rim. Yeah, you can see that. Got my lid and my band. I put the lid on until it's, or throw it around. Put the lid on and make sure it's finger tight, which just means just tightening it with your hand. You don't have to use like every muscle in the world or whatever. Then I'm gonna set this in the, so this is where I made the jam. Behind it, I don't know if you can see, is uh, the boiling water, which this will go into while I fill up its friends. And so I will do that and finish doing the rest of the pints. I already did half pints. Um, just earlier just because I've got a lot of batches and I forgot to record uh, and then like I said once I'm done I will put them in the under the boiling water for 10 minutes and then pull them out for five to or like lift the basket thing and then bring them out and let them sit overnight and in the morning I will have jam um, also I meant to say if you're still watching earlier in the video I said that I can uh, plum jam every single day I didn't mean that I meant one day a year I can for every year on the one day. I obviously don't do this big production every single day and I don't have plums every day. But anyways, thank you for following along if you watched. Um, I am going to make another kind. It's a, like a spiced one with cinnamon and apple juice. So I'm really excited about that. But that's a, I've never made that before. So I'll try that out before I make a video. Make sure it tastes delicious. Um, but thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, feedback, things that you do or whatever, I'd love to hear those. Go ahead and put those below and thank you. Have a great day, night, whatever. Bye.